Hey guys, today's review is going to be sort of a continuation of a review I did a couple months ago when I talked about this strange little fellow. This is the Frommer Model 1910. It's a weird old handgun designed in 1910 by Rudolf Frommer in Hungary. And they're extremely rare today, and they're incredibly hard to find. And the reason that is, it's just basically, it was a complete market failure. They never sold many of them, they didn't make many of them. And my theory as to why that is, is because, a couple things really. First, the ergonomics are just not very good. It feels very odd in the hand. And second, the timing, I think, was really bad on it. Because 1910, when he produced this, it was based on a design he originally came up with in 1901. And, you know, 1901 is still, you're still sort of in the... Uh, the beginning of the semi-auto era when people were coming up with all sorts of crazy designs and there was all sorts of weird stuff going around nobody really knew how to make a semi-auto handgun work um, but by 1910 he was still basing his guns on that design and unfortunately John Browning's designs had already started to sort of take over the world and by 1910 you know a year later the Colt government model came out it's just this thing didn't really have much of a chance being so weird so goofy shot a weak cartridge there's just a lot of stuff stacked against it by the time this came out so after a couple of years of failure you know, they only produced a few thousand of these. Frommer came out with his next new and improved design, and that is what we're talking about today. Pulled out my Frommer Model 1912 Stop. I actually have a couple of them. I have a baby and a full size. And there's no real authoritative consensus on where the name Stop comes from. Most people just seem to think that it's based on the English word stop and sort of means they stop them in their, stops them in their tracks. But the gun is also known by its model designation, the 1912, because it was that's when it was designed. Um, it was adopted by the Hungarian military in 1919, so you also sometimes see it referred to as the Model 1919. And it was actually used in service until up through the Second World War. There, there were a couple other Hungarian guns that sort of started to take over, but these were used um, through World War II, and they came in a couple different calibers. Now, I want to say they came in, and throughout this video I might even say it, that they came in 32 ACP and 380 Auto. That's actually not true. They came in 7.65 Frommer and 9mm Frommer. And those are basically the same as 32 ACP and 380 Auto, but they're loaded a little bit more hotly. And I'll talk about that sort of in the shooting impressions too. But they're not the same caliber. They do fit and they do cycle for the most part. But um, if you've seen my shooting videos, you know that this one doesn't work so well with regular 32 ACP. So they came in a couple different calibers. When these first came out, they, they made them both at the same time, the baby and the full size. But they made more babies originally. And later on, when they got accepted by the military, they started producing these full size ones more. You can sort of tell the dates on the guns because of the grips. The wood grips came out later. The plastic rubber here, that was the earlier variation of the grips. I'll let you see the other side for a second. And they are solid steel, you know, there's no kind of uh, plastics or anything obviously coming from the early 1900s like that. The guns are single action only. Uh, I have them cocked for no reason really, but um, pull the trigger there. Single action only, it won't pull without you cocking the hammer. Single stack magazine. Um, only came in a blued finish. There was no nickel version, which I've seen a few of them out there that are nickel. But they only came in blued. And the most striking feature really about them when you look at them for the first time, I think, is the two tube setup, sort of. You see there's like a tube up here and then a tube underneath. The bottom here has the barrel, and the top up here has one of the recoil springs and the, re and the guide rods. The reason I say that is because these actually do have a familiar relation to his failed 1910, and that is the long recoil action that he put in here. And Rudolf Frommer, for most of his career, was driven by the idea of putting a long recoil action, a system that John Browning had actually come up with in the late 1800s. He tried to put it into a handgun successfully, and he did it with the 1910 and all of its previous iterations that never were very successful at all, and he continued that with the 1912 and the stop pistol. And what it is, in a nutshell, basically, you have two springs. You have a spring around the barrel down here, and then in this top tube you have another spring around a, a recoil rod. And I guess it would actually be more of a bolt rod. But either way, what happens when you fire it, and I'll cock this to make it a little easier, when you fire it, the barrel actually is on a spring too. So it goes back. The barrel recoils with the bolt. They're attached at this point. They go a distance of about the length of a cartridge, and once they hit that distance, this bolt untwists itself. From the barrel and it unlocks so that the bolt can keep going forward. The barrel is now free so the spring that's around the barrel shoots it forward and as it goes forward and this goes backwards, they're going opposite directions, the spent casing is ejected from the ejection port here, the barrel ends up back where it's supposed to be up here, the bolt is still hanging back here because it keeps recoiling and then there's a spring around this rod up here and that spring drives the bolt forward and strips around off the, the top of the magazine and chambers another round and then you're ready to go again. 
So that's the long recoil system in a nutshell. It was in here, it's in the stop, and after this, in 1929, he kind of threw in the Talon camp with a new, a new design altogether. It was just basically a, a simple blowback gun. But it's really a pretty interesting system. It never really took off outside of Hungary, and it's, I think it's just because it's overly complicated. You know, you have things going different directions, multiple springs. The gun is extremely hard to um, take apart and put back together. So it's really probably not the most ideal system for a service handgun, but that's what this gun is about, the long recoil system. So I'll talk a little bit about the size of it, of both of these really. Pulled out my trusty old Beretta. And this one, the, the Frommer obviously shoots a smaller cartridge, the 32 ACP equivalent. And sorry for all the bunny hair floating around. Uh, so it's definitely a smaller gun. The bread is big and the Frommer is smaller. It fits smaller European hands of the day and it's just shooting a smaller caliber anyway. The Baby is intended to be sort of a pocketable gun. And it's kind of large for a pocket gun, really, but it is shooting a bit bigger caliber than most pocket guns, which we're, we're shooting 25 ACP. Um, but it's not a bad size. It's pretty small. Weight, this is 16 ounces, and full size is about 20 ounces. So it's actually pretty lightweight um, for the size of the gun, in my opinion. When you pick it up, it feels light. The guns are actually constructed out of a solid block of steel, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if you can really tell just from looking at this video, but there are no seams on it. Um, and since there's no slide, everything's on the inside of these two tubes. You know, it, the grips and the frame and these two tubes are all milled out of one piece of steel. So I imagine besides being complicated to produce, it was probably also pretty expensive. And that may have also kind of precluded it from being successful outside of Hungary. Where there might have been a little bit of nationalist pride, sort of, and, you know, a Hungarian des designed gun for a while. Talk about the ergonomics now. The uh, grip is pretty straight, which I'm not a big fan of. I tend to prefer more of a swept-back Luger-style grip. So for me, it doesn't feel super great to hold. Also, this hammer kind of comes down low, and it prevents you from getting a good high uphold that we're used to today. The uh, It also feels a little bit top-heavy, just because there's all this stuff up here, but it's not really absurd in any way. I'll show you some of the controls. There's a grip safety here, and the hammer, obviously. you got some sights. I'll show you those. They're fixed and very small, as was the style back then. So it's tough to get a good sight picture. Cocking it is pretty easy to do, or racking the slide rather. There's a, this bolt here has some grip serrations on it. And it's pretty easy to grab, so you just pull it back, and let it go. And then the gun is racked and ready to go. Like I said, it's single action only, so really the only safety you have is this grip safety. So it's good that that's on there. And the baby and the full size actually share a lot of components. Um, not stuff related to the size, like obviously this, the magazine is going to be a different size, the grips are different size, barrel, you can't switch those out, but everything else, like the springs in here, the trigger, the sears, the hammer, are completely interchangeable. This one does feel a little bit more awkward, I think, to hold because you have to activate this grip safety, and you, need to, you want to kind of hold it up high, because that's where the trigger is in line with, but you can't because the hammer comes down pretty low. So you're kind of holding it down here, and it just feels like it's really sitting up above your hand. If you see my dad shooting it in the shooting video, it does look just a little bit awkward to shoot. This one's also harder to rack, and I think that's because it has a stiff spring and a smaller distance, so it's more compressed, so it's just a little bit heavier to pull. So speaking of the shooting video, I'll talk about how they shoot. They shoot pretty well. Um, it's a lightweight gun, so it does have a bit more... I, I don't want to say it's a light, it's a snappy gun. So it's shooting a 32 ACP, so it's not really a powerful cartridge, but... It has an unusual sort of recoil to it, and I think that has to do just with the, the recoil action that he's using, the long recoil action where there's two things going different ways, and it's, it's covered over a long distance. It just kind of has a strange feel to it. It's not bad, really, but it's just kind of the first few times you shoot it, it's a little bit unusual. I'm used to shooting traditional blowback 32s, so it was a bit strange for that. The grip angle, I'm not a big fan of the straight up and down, so it, it's, it's hard for me for it to feel natural in my hands. And with the small sights, I'm just honestly not very accurate with it, sadly. And there's somewhat of a debate about the calibers because it was actually chambered in 7.65 Frommer, at least these two were. And it's basically the same as 32 ACP, but it's not, but it's hotter. So you do sometimes, in the smaller one at least, I've gotten uh, several failures to extract because of that, where it doesn't cycle properly. For some reason, though, this one will shoot, the, the full-size one shoots 32 ACPs just fine. Whereas this one, I need to find the hot European stuff, like Cellier and below, in order for it to cycle. Which, if you see, again, if you see that video of my dad shooting, you'll see some of the failures, where it just doesn't have enough oomph to fully uh, 
chamber the next round and everything. But, you know, if you have hot enough ammo in them, they shoot fine. Like I said, I'm not amazingly accurate with them, sadly, but uh, I'll show you the trigger pull, too. Let's just see that up close. A little bit of travel there, and then... It's kind of heavy. I would say it might be 9 pounds or something. But it is a service gun. Not amazingly crisp, but... It's not too bad. It's, 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 there are definitely mushier guns out there, and overall I would say the trigger is not that bad. You know, I'd give it probably a, a B- minus rating or something like that. So I'll just talk about the criticisms briefly, and really my main bone to pick with this gun is how hard it is to pull apart and put back together. There's a really good video already online by a guy named Angry Gun Nerd, and it's pretty thorough on how to take it apart. It's just really tedious and annoying, and there's all these small parts you have to twist, and this bushing here is actually a little screwdriver, and it's just really a pain in the butt to take apart and then put back together again. And it's kind of surprising for a field gun that, that it would be that complicated. Really, that is my main criticism against it, besides just typical stuff that you're, you're likely to find with these older guns. You know, the ergonomics aren't amazing for me, tiny sight, sight picture and everything. Um, you know, those are my really main criticisms. So, moving on to my conclusion section. Um, they're just really cool guns overall, and what I like about them mostly... Apart from stuff that's, you know, it's like, got the long recoil action in there, that's unusual, they look funny, that's cool. They're Hungarian, which is kind of esoteric to collect Hungarian handguns, so that's cool. Most guys collect German or Russian or American or whatever, but Hungarian, not so much. But apart from all that, the real appeal of these, I think, is the price. You know, you're looking at $200 on average probably for a full-size stop, up to maybe 400 max, maybe 500 for uh, for one in the 9mm cartridge and the 380 cartridge with military proofs on it but really you know two hundred dollars you can easily get one of these in good condition the babies go for a little bit more um, especially the ones the babies and the 380 caliber are apparently the most rare of all of them so those are going to go for more the babies just in general go for a little bit more but these easily you can pay two hundred dollars and get a great great example they're not extremely easy to find which is surprising because about three hundred thousand of them were made but despite that, despite the rare, relative rarity, they're just really cheap, and they're a really great deal for that. And they shoot a common caliber. You know, you can just go to Walmart and get 32 ACP, and at least in this one, it shoots fine. So that's a plus, too. It's just a really cheap, easy way to add something that's rare and exotic and cool, a little bit of spice to your collection. And, uh, you know, you see them every once in a while at gun shows. There's always at least one, maybe, on Gunbroker. At the very least, they're interesting and cool. And although I'm, I'm not extremely accurate with mine, still like to shoot it. It's not my favorite 32 ACP handgun, but it's still just fun to pull out. I'll show you the width too so you can see. It's pretty thin compared to the Beretta here. So yeah, it's the Frommer model 1912 stop. It's a cool Hungarian gun. So yeah, keep an eye out for them. Pick one up if you can. Cheap and fun. Cheap and cool. Thanks for watching.